Hi, I'm Vic and welcome to Geeko Farm, where we do things differently. Okay, small confession to make. I've been holding out on you. Uh, this is Lewis and he is a ragdoll and he's a special needs ragdoll because he only has one kidney so he won't be bred but wait there's more and this is Bree. Bree is mum oh, and she wants to be with kitten so I think we'll let her go shall we? Being pedigrees, ragdolls are renowned for their playfulness and their sense of decorum. And when little Lewis gets all wet, he just spin dries himself. Apologies if uh, the video sort of skips around a bit. The weather hasn't been very good, in fact we've had quite a lot of rain and uh, we've had to film it in and out of gaps and as you can hear uh, in the background there are planes dive bombing us because now the weather's good they're all out um, crop dusting. So I did this uh, video showing me shooting plastic bottles with various firearms and I thought well what about old school? So the question is can Vic hit a damn thing with this? Let's find out shall we? The problem is that arrows don't work like uh, bullets do, so that's what they call a bullet point in archery. Um, these things don't travel at supersonic velocity, so they're not going to sort of cause hydrostatic shock and push the water out of the way like a bullet does. Uh, even with a, a broadhead, this is a broadhead, they, they fold up and then unfold like that when they hit the target. Um, all it's going to do is basically slice some nice slots in the target and let all the water out, which is essentially what you're doing when you're hunting with arrows. Um, so we need a slightly different arrow. What you need, in fact, is something called a blunt, which uh, looks like that. Uh, yep, lump of rubber on the end of an ordinary arrow. I used to make arrows, not many people know that, but yeah. Uh, now, my grandfather showed me how to make these things uh, just using a piece of wood. Um, we used a piece of elder wood and pushed the shaft of the arrow into the soft squidgy stuff in the middle of the elder stick. And people say, oh, well, these things are, you know, they're for practice and they're harmless. Well, they're not harmless. I've seen one of these go through a garden fence, leaving a hole that big. Um, and they're not really for practice, or they do stop the uh, arrow sticking in the ground quite so much. Um, they cause the arrow to sort of flip over and you can find it again easily afterwards. But what they are for is they're for hunting small game. Uh, they're cheap, uh, you won't chip them on a rock. They're bigger, they give you a bigger chance of hitting small game. And quite frankly, uh, they deliver a hammer blow. So more than adequate for small game. Let's see what they do to a milk bottle. To find out how fast the arrow is going, I've got a chronograph here, a couple of slots in the top, they um, detect shadows above, it knows how far apart the slots are, a little computer in there calculates the time, and so the speed. One sixty-two. And one sixty-four. These arrows seem to be having a velocity of around 161 feet per second. That one's 162. So much slower than a rifle bullet. Even though um, it's travelling at a tenth of the speed or so of a bullet, this big fat head on the end of the arrow seems to be able to create a kind of mini tsunami travelling straight through the bottle um, with the aforementioned effects. And it's very tempting to shoot at that aircraft, but I don't think I would reach it. So you can see what that does to the target. It does cause hydrostatic shock and blows things open. So as you can imagine, it'd be quite effective on small game. Also, 
it puts the lie to these being safe things to practice with. No, they're not. And don't let anybody tell you otherwise. We designed these uh, little notched things that fit on top of an ordinary piece of uh, fiberglass pole like you use for propping up electric fences. In fact, this is an electric fence, um, but it needed more props. So anyway, we've designed those little bits and uh, I'll put a link to them in the text below. Um, and we discovered that they're actually quite handy for propping up bird netting over the stuff in our garden. Yeah. Oh, and what's down here? More ink caps. Unfortunately, they're a bit past it, so they won't go in an omelette. The greenhouse, though, is going absolutely fantastic. We have so much greenery in there now, and this is heading into winter. We are going to be well supplied with salads. We have some courgettes forming. Uh, we have even, uh, hiding in the back there, beans. And, of course, lettuces by the score. One of the things I'm particularly looking forward to though um, are the kohlrabi. If you've not seen them before, this uh, bulbous bit on top of the stem can be used almost as a root vegetable and of course growing root vegetables in hydroponics is very tricky because they tend to clog the runs up. But these can be treated pretty much like say a swede or something like that. You can grate them, put them in the fritters, Ah, oh, very versatile, and makes an awesome coleslaw too, of course. But for now, that's your lot, down on Geeko Farm. So, let us be off. Let, let, uh, I'll get my coat.